The seas are rising. There are many ways to slow it down, but there are also many aspects in which it's too late, where the damage that's already been done is irreversible, and eventually coastal cities will be below sea level. I'll show you the science behind these statements, but I really want to talk about how to come to terms with our impending fate. And there's something I've noticed among people and how they react emotionally when they hear about the climate crisis. I'm Dr. Karen Bolter, a climate scientist, a researcher, and a professor in South Florida. And what I've noticed is that most people who first learn about sea level rise have one of two reactions. They're either fearful or indifferent. So I'll ask you, have these talks been a little scary for you tonight? And what do you do with that fear? Does it make you pessimistic? Or do you feel hopeless and indifferent? Like this problem is too big to solve. Is there some kind of fight or flight response somewhere in your brain, maybe urging you to numb yourself? It won't get really bad for another few decades, right? And what can I do as one person? Am I gonna save the polar bears by voting or going vegan? Does it feel like it's out of your control? And plus, we have so many other threats facing us right now that we can control. COVID, our jobs, our kids, we have enough to worry about. That powerless feeling that festers in many when learning about the current impacts and the catastrophes to come, it doesn't leave us feeling empowered. When contemplating such a destructive long-term threat, people are paralyzed. Yeah, Miami will be underwater, but I'll be dead by then. I'm gonna tell you tonight about the sea level rise science, but while you listen, I invite you to be aware of your emotions and thoughts. How do you feel? Indifferent or scared or something else? And my intention is for you to understand the science, but more importantly, for you to be aware of how you react emotionally, because this emotional reaction that's something you do have control over. And I believe it's the first step to addressing this crisis, coming to terms with it. Why? Well, it's hard to engage positively on any issue when you're coming from fear or indifference. Sea level rise is a reality, and I'm inviting you to listen to me explain why. And as you do, choose a point of view that leaves you with hope the sea level has already risen 10 inches in the past century in Miami. It's been slowly creeping up for the past few thousand years with a few dramatic pulses here and there. People look at maps with the border between land and ocean and think it's always gonna be that way. But look at this image on the left, what North America looked like during the last ice age when sea level was 20 feet lower. Where was all that ocean water? in the ice sheets. And then on the right, this is what it looked like between ice ages when sea levels were over 200 feet higher. We know sea levels have varied dramatically over Earth's history, but it's different this time. It's happening much, much faster, and it's being caused by our consumption of fossil fuels. We know that CO2 and other greenhouse gases trap heat warming our atmosphere and our oceans ice melts warming oceans expand and you can see here that these three components co2 temperature and sea level have moved up and down together over time but recently since the industrial revolution the co2 has gone off the charts and the rest has yet to catch up the last time CO2 concentrations were this high, it is estimated that sea levels were 30 feet higher. If we observe CO2 levels, it is very predictable that the oceans will rise quickly. So we can't have this false sense of security with the small-ish changes we are currently measuring with tide gauges and satellites, because scientists were using basic laws of chemistry and physics to calculate how much and when we will see these increases take off. And it's an exponential relationship. You can see here that our regional Southeast Florida Climate Compact has agreed on a projection. I converted it to feet, and you can see that going out to 2120, things really start to pick up. And what do these numbers mean for Miami? 
We have to compare when the ocean level is higher than the land elevation. So looking at elevation, um, the map on the left, the land below six feet is blue, with darker blue being lower. And the land above six feet is brown, with the darker brown being our coastal ridge, which goes as high as 20 feet. Look at the Miami River and the other subtle sloughs that cut through our coastal ridge. These are the historic flow of the Everglades. The areas to the west, they were all swamps a century ago before they were drained and filled. Why do you think we have so many canals? They were dredged and the fill built up the foundations for homes. And that's why when it floods, luckily, the water mostly goes into the canals and into the streets because they're lower. And all those islands in Biscayne Bay, artificial, they're from fill. They got dredged by deepening the intercoastal. And all these changes in sea level, it's not gonna happen all at once. We're estimating about two feet of rise by 2060, but we know that the tide can range two feet in one day. And we know some days are worse, like the fall king tides. There are many areas in Miami where there are already a cumulative nine days of tidal flooding annually. These areas in blue show how that number can grow with two feet of sea level rise if we do nothing. You can see Miami Beach sticks out here, but they are doing something. They're doing a lot, mainly pumps and seawalls. And that's why we know it's not just about elevation. There are other reasons they call Miami Ground Zero, the poster child for sea level rise, the canary in the coal mine. Here in Miami, we're low lying, relatively flat. We have porous limestone, we get hurricanes, and we have water coming from all directions. Sea level rise is increasing the frequency and impact for all flood hazards. We have groundwater flooding, where our shallow groundwater in our Biscayne aquifer actually spills above the ground and it's influenced, pushed up further by rising seas and tides. Increases in sea level, they may seem small, but only a few inches can bring the storm surge much further inland. Here you see a map of Miami, and the blue is the area that's currently vulnerable to a maximum Category 1 hurricane surge. And then in pink, that's the additional land that will be at risk with 1 and 2 feet of sea level rise. The area at risk nearly triples. This is a done deal. It's already baked in with what we've already put in the atmosphere. But there is so much we can do to plan and prepare. And being preventative instead of reactive saves time, money, and even lives. Most of my work these days is developing FEMA applications to fund pre-disaster resilience. And it's a business case because every dollar we spend on preventative measures, on average, saves the $6 that we would have spent if we waited until after the disaster to react. These local solutions, natural and engineered, are ways to adapt to sea level rise, living with water. And then there are ways to slow it down, mainly reducing emissions. And that's what's referred to in the climate community as mitigation. What is the future of our humanity? There will come a point in the coming decades when we will be forced to accept our fate. And when that point comes, we will have to come to terms with the expiration dates of islands, of coastal cities, perhaps entire cultures and civilization as we know it. And not just the human race, of course. All of the species on Earth, they'll have just been a blip in infinite space and time. And now there's something to make you feel indifferent. It's probably not going to happen in our lifetimes. But I do think about my future great-grandchildren and how they will come to terms with sea level rise. All we can do is come to terms with our destiny. And that gives us the capacity to do everything we can to prepare, that's adapting, and to slow it down, that's mitigating. It doesn't serve you to get upset about it. Accept that the climate is changing dramatically and incorporate 
the appropriate awareness and preparedness into everything you do. Find a way to talk about it every day. Find a point of view that works for you, that leaves you with a sense of urgency, a call to action, and most importantly, a feeling of inspiration. Find a point of view where you can operate in the moment, now, without feeling anxiety about the future. You have to train yourself. Find a strategy and stick to it. Create a habit of being a cause in the matter of climate preparedness and do that until it becomes natural to act. You may be surprised when you find that you can connect climate change to everything you do. Talk about it every day. Come to terms with climate crisis in a productive way. And what does that look like? It doesn't mean arguing with climate deniers or preaching to the choir with our fellow climate activists. Identify what climate change means to you and do your best to live your life through that meaning. We know things are going to get much worse no matter what, but we can't give up. We owe it to the future generations to do what we can. As a young mother, I remember obsessing over the safest car seat and always looking for ways to protect my babies. And we focus on these short-term threats. It's human nature. Meanwhile, do mothers think about whether their children will have clean water or clean air or any resources left? There's an analogy of a frog and you put it in a pot of boiling water and it jumps out. It knows danger. But if you slowly increase the temperature degree by degree, the frog will boil to death. Sea level rise is a slowly creeping tidal wave that will never recede. Please join me in spreading the message. We need to prepare for sea level rise and living with water instead of ignoring it and reacting to it after it occurs. Preparing instead of reacting will save money, effort, and peace of mind. Choose what you're gonna focus on. What does it mean to you? What are you going to do? Set some goals and notice how fulfilled you feel when you achieve them. Appreciate and enjoy the world we live in. Love, give, and be thankful. Thank you.